Hello everyone. Today in series of Docplex's KOL interviews, we have with us Dr. Vineet Kumar Garg, who is the director and chief physician at Kamlesh Memorial Hospital, Rajasthan. Dr. Vineet, thank you for being here with us today. So thanks the, for interaction and thanks for calling me. Thank you, Dr. Vineet. So uh, the topic of our discussion is going to be role of glycemic variability in diabetic microvascular complications and especially the role of gliptins in that. So, uh, Dr. Vineet, uh, the benefits of uh, glycemic control in uh, preventing microvascular diabetic complications, they are uh, convincingly proved by clinical trials. So, in your opinion, what steps can be taken into account for achieving optimum glycemic control? Initially, when we started the practice in diabetes, even I am I have been practicing for 25 years. Before that, the only thing what we were taught was to control the diabetes. Anyhow, then after 10, 20, 25 years, it happened that there should be a strict and a tighter glucose control. Then what happened for last 2-3 years after the accord study when it was found that the tighter controls are harmful, they are increasing the mortality. So then they shifted the target and focus of the diabetes control to reduction of micro and macular complications, both micro and macrovascular complications by, reduce, by smoothing out the glycemic control. So, what are the smoothing of glycemic control? That is the glycemic variability. Glycemic variability is a complex mechanical phenomena in which there is an intraday and intraday excursion of the glucose. Peak and trough, peak and trough, peak and trough. So, patient may, have, may be having sugar 90, fasting, PP 256, then again sugar 88, PP 296. So, there has been as highs and lows. So, different the peak and the trough, it should not be much. The higher the trough and the peak, more the GV, grassy variability, the more the damage to the organs. And what I have studied is the minimum and maximum variation difference should be for a clinician should be around 40 mg per deal. And that we can do very easily by doing SMBG 7 point uh, monitoring a day. And uh, we can uh, take an standard deviation or we can just have a rough idea how the patient is doing about it. And regarding what you are uh, asking about the glycemic variability and microcellular complication, see glycemic variability, what does it cause? It causes inflammation, it causes activation of reactive oxygen species, it causes inflammatory, increased inflammatory markers, it causes dyslipidemia, it causes endothelial dysfunction. So it harms the endothelial functions and the microvascular bed and leading to affect, uh, affection of most of the organs, kidneys, eyes cardiac, any organ which has microvasculature. So it is proved now that we have to focus on the glycemic variability because higher blood glucose levels, constant, they are not so harmful as the fluctuations are there. More the fluctuation, more is the complication, more is the morbidity and more is the mortality. So here sir, you mentioned about peaks and troughs that we see. So, any particular timing of the day where you see a peak or a trough or it all no, depends on Actually, see, uh, no, uh, what we used to study was diabetes management, all three things were coordinated. Fasting plasma glucose, postprandial plasma glucose and HB1C. They were only the three dimensional uh, mechanism to control diabetes. But now there is a fourth dimension to the management that is glycemic variability. What happens is in a single, there are suppose three sort of patients. In three sort of patients, the sugar level HbA1c in last 90 days and 3 months is equal. But what happens is, one is patient is having uh, sugar levels near the baseline, one is having uh, normal sugar and after 2-3 two, three, two, two, three days it increases then it comes down. In a patient, in a day it goes to 80-90, comes down to, uh, 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 it comes down to 284, then comes down to 60, then again they go to 276. So this fluctuation. And this is harming the patient. But and each of the three patients can have same HB1C. So HB1C is not a predictor for the complication of diabetes and even for hypoglycemia. We have to also consider the glycemic glycemic variability. variability. So glycemic variability is very important to as an independent predictor for the complications of diabetes and hypoglycemia. And hypoglycemia prediction is I think one of the best 
things what aggressive variability monitoring what we can do okay so here then uh, how uh, gliptins is a better choice of therapy as uh, compared to the existing uh, hypoglycemic agents uh, in treating uh, type 2 diabetes actually we are uh, there are so there is big armamentarium of drugs available with us what happens is we need drugs which does not cause fluctuation in the sugar we want the level of the glucose should come down to the near basal level where the peaks and troughs are evened out and the difference between the peak and trough comes down so we have to manage two things if we can use a dpp4 inhibitor which inhibits a dpp4 that will increase the gip glp that what it will do it will reduce the sugar level and it will not reduce the sugar level to a larger extent another point is the glucagon surge it manages the glucagon surge if there is the sugar is going down the glucagon will all will balance it so evening out of both the factors is seen only with this drug group of drug gliptin and that is independent of everything so only th drugs which are useful to control glycemic variability are gliptins is that the class effect and we have seen many drugs but most of the studies are available with, with vilda gliptin or with seta gliptin very few with sexa gliptin and the newer drug internal gliptin i think there is no study till date because we are using the drug maximum in india outside india they are not uh, they have not done any study on that okay all right thank you so much for mentioning that so uh, is there any role of uh, any other lipid lowering agents as well in uh, managing microvascular diabetes no that is a totally different topic no mm -hmm. uh, because glycemic variability itself causes dyslipidemia so if we are controlling dyslipidemia so that will help control the microvascular complication but as an add on and a dyslipidemic yeah. drug yeah. it is going to help as an add on right as an add on yeah, as an you, add -on. you you wanted to yeah. just ask that as so as an add on therapy uh -huh. you can always add on uh, the statins or the phenofibrates to help the dyslipidemia go away oh. but independent me mechanism of glycemic variability always causes dyslipidemia so in usually most of the diabetics we are using uh, dyslipidemic agents so already that part is already taken care of but being an independent risk factor for dyslipidemia the glycemic variability if we control that fluctuations we will smooth out those fluctuations it will be a very good thing for the patient for survival and to reduce the morbidity and the mortality okay any key takeaways that you would like to share with our community especially in uh, terms of managing uh, glycemic variability only thing what we have to do is uh, see we, we have to manage sugar levels we have to lifestyle modification diet that is the basic thing these drug all the drugs are good in type 1 diabetes i think the glycemic variability is quite much in type 2 diabetes glycemic variability is not uh, to uh, that level but even then the glycemic variability we are seeing every day we are adding on the drugs metformin and sulfonylureas and pagliterazone and gliptin and glt2 insulins and all so what we have to see is the drugs which even out the glycemic variability the fluctuation between the trough and the peak is less if you maintain the gv around 40 i think so you are done with and uh, it will be good that you are able to reduce those complications to reduce the morbidity and mortality in those patients all right thank you so much dr vinith for sharing uh, such key insights with us uh, thank you so much thank you thank you very much thank you all of you